Coming up on this episode of SEMA TV. We take a look at the history of phones, put an end to cyberbullying, and get disconnected. Stay tuned for all this and more only on SEMA TV. Siva TV. TV. My name is Charlie. That's your line. Oh, and my name's Nabayo. And we will be your hosts today through this. Sorry, one sec. Hey, mom, I'm I'm doing the Siva TV thing right now. Okay, okay, I have to go. Okay, okay, bye. Well, as Sorry. I was saying, this episode is all about the good and bad effects technology has on our society. Yeah, and to get things started, let's call on student producer Elijah over at Del Paso Manor to learn more about the history of the phone. So my video was about people like have all these modern conveniences that they have with their cell phones, but they don't realize like how it was before cell phones. I hope people learn that they should they should appreciate the conveniences that they have now. My job was kind of all over the place, like filming, editing, and scripting. My favorite part was probably filming because we could, we like went certain places that we had to film. Video is a powerful tool because it's a visual of what people could read and sometimes some people see visuals better than just like words in general. Nowadays, kids have an opportunity to socialize, communicate, and be entertained through a simple handheld device, the smartphone. Life wasn't always that accessible. According to CNN Health, 45% of kids ages 10 to 12 have a smartphone. Kids nowadays don't realize how good they have it with so many conveniences at their fingertips. When their parents were kids, life was much different. Mobile devices were not existent for the average kid. People didn't have the ability to access everyday needs on a handheld device. Back then, when kids needed to call home, they needed to call from a landline or payphone. What's a payphone anyway? Now, kids communicate by using a mobile phone rather than a landline. Kids can also communicate by texting with friends or parents. How convenient! Back then, when kids needed to research a topic or grab the latest novel, they needed to go to a public library or a bookstore. Kid now kids become informed on internet search engines. Back then, when kids wanted to play video games, they needed a game console and a TV. Now, kids can be entertained anywhere by playing video games on their smartphone, along with watching videos and movies. Back then, kids needed to go to stores to purchase items. Now, kids can have an adult buy products for them on online sites. Back then, when kids wanted to take pictures, they needed a portable camera with a film. Now, kids can capture moments of everyday life through photos and videos. Back then, when kids wanted to share a picture or a video with another person, they had to schedule an arrangement to see it. Now, kids can share pictures and videos with friends and family on social media sites. The next time you grab your mobile device to connect with a friend, or watch the latest show on Netflix, be thankful for the modern conveniences of today. We have grown up in a world where we have always have had access to this technology and don't always appreciate how life has become. Phone addiction is a serious issue. Long-term phone usage may lead to physical and mental disabilities, including obesity and depression. Let's hear from a student producer, Sam Rita, for more on the subject. The video is about the negative impacts of cell phones. I used to ask my parents when I could get a cell phone, and they never really told me when. So I decided to do some research about it, and I realized that cell phones have a negative impact. I want viewers to take away that getting a cell phone isn't always the best idea. I feel like the most important skill you need to make videos is a mindset towards your opinion. You have to have a really strong mindset so that that can like go into your video. I've learned that 
Video is a powerful tool because video making really makes a change in how people think about something. And it really projects somebody's opinion. Every time we pick up our cell phones to attend a call or answer a text, we don't realize how dangerous cell phones are. Some kids want cell phones because they think that phones are a sign of popularity and that cell phones are cool. But unfortunately, they don't think twice about the perils and the consequences of having one. appropriate time to start thinking about a cell phone um, it may be about 12 to 13 and at that age there should be very significant boundaries put on their use of the phone. One of our primary concerns about cell phone use in kids is obesity because kids are sedentary when they're using phones typically and so it keeps them from going outside as much being as active as normal um, playing in a more rambunctious way, which is really important for health. There's also some concern about um, cell phone usage and damage to the brain or p possibly long-term side effects like cancer. Um, and that will, that will probably show itself in the next couple of decades. And then um, another really huge issue is anxiety. There, it's shown that kids that have a very high use of cell phones have much higher levels of stress, anxiety, and depression. And particularly in the teen years when they're doing a lot of social media that allows them to compare their life to all their peers' lives. Another huge issue is addiction. So there's actually a lot of data that show that children can become addicted to doing certain things on their phones, um, checking their texts, um, posting on social media, uh, playing games that become very addictive. Um, I don't allow cell phones in class because now it's just a lot of students trying to go onto social media, trying to go to Instagram, texting their friends. So I see the cell phones being more of a, of a distraction rather than enhancing the, uh, the, the lesson or the curriculum. All of those things um, should not be difficult for children to do and it turns out that they they refuse to put their phone down. If you're addicted to something like your phone and always being on online on social media, that could be a, a real problem. One other really unfortunate thing that I've seen a number of times now is that kids have trouble falling asleep because they're on their cell phone um, during the time they're supposed to be preparing for sleep. Sometimes I get like, when my parents tell me to uh, go to like bed, um, I get my phone and then I hide it from my parents and then I just like watch on my phone while I'm sleeping in my bed. And so many kids, if they're allowed to be on the cell phone or an iPad or something like that prior to sleeping, they will uh, actually not be able to get restful for a long period of time because they've been looking at that screen. It seems completely inappropriate for an eight-year-old to be carrying around $700 to $1,000 piece of equipment. Number one, they're likely to lose it. Number two, it has, gives them access. If it's unregulated, it'll give them access to everything that's on the internet. So the boundaries regarding the use of cell phones, it's the boundaries that we have to establish. And kids themselves will start uh, clamoring for a phone around age seven or eight because somebody in their classroom already has it. I'd say don't let peer pressure make you want a cell phone because it's a lot of times a seven or eight year old child just has no business having something like that. It's, it's, not, it's not what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be playing and having fun. And that's why I changed from wanting a cell phone to avoiding them for now. I think now it's time that we take a look at some of the negative impacts technology can have on us, especially in the car. Cell phones, 
are great tools for communication, but there's a time and place for everything. Loretta demonstrates how dangerous texting while driving can be in her PSA called, Don't Get Wrecked, Save a Life. Hashtag I Can Help is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering students to use social media more positively. In this documentary by Grace McDonald, we can learn how we all can use technology to improve our lives. The video is about a nonprofit organization called Hashtag I Can Help and how it's empowering teens to do uh, good on the internet. I actually got the idea from this person, her name's Kim Carr, she's a founder. She came to this intern day and it was like all these events and like these amazing things that they were doing. And so I thought maybe I should get the message out to other people. My job in making it was I pretty much did the whole thing myself. My favorite part of it has to probably be uh, meeting everyone there. They're like these amazing people and like once they walk in the room they bring like this kind of bright and positivity to it and so it was just really fun meeting them. I have learned a lot about how to edit and how to really make professional videos but also how to organize my ideas to make this like amazing project. So I thought that was really cool to learn. I believe video is a powerful tool, especially for our generation, since if you walk around, there's people these days looking at their phone, uh, looking at videos and stuff. So I feel like if you can convey a message on video, I feel like it'd be really impactful. Social media connects us all. It's our passage to the world. Did you know, on average, people spend six to nine hours a day looking at a small screen? This device lets us connect to family, friends, and people all around the world. You can share anything on it. What people think is a small joke can mean something different to others. Social media is exposing people to the negative side of technology, using it as a tool to harass victims while many of us either participate or just stand by and watch it happen with little to no repercussions. People are victims of cyberbullying every day, and our youth are suffering on a daily basis. 37% of teens that use social media have had an increase in anxiety and depression. 48% that get cyberbullied online don't consult a counselor or guardian for help. 43% have had an increase in ADHD, suicide has increased by 200% since social media has come out. The problem isn't social media, it's the user. Organizations such as Hashtag I Can Help have helped decrease these statistics by showing our youth digital citizenship. So far, they have been to over 1,000 schools in our nation empowering teens to delete negativity on social media and replace it with positivity. They have partnered with all major social media companies such as Twitter, Facebook, Google, Instagram, and Snapchat. This is the story about our digital first responders. Hashtag I Can Help. Every year, the I Can Help nonprofit gathers at a sponsor's headquarters to discuss the future of the organization. This year, they met at the Twitter headquarters in San Francisco.
Vatsoth. I'm the co-founder, executive director of Hashtag I Can Help. Hi, I'm Kim Carr, and I'm a co-founder of Hashtag I Can Help. So I Can Help is a nonprofit uh, designed around empowering students and educators to use technology positively and really give them a platform to kind of share their story um, and to connect and uplift students both online and offline. So I had a student at my school who, um, there was a fake Facebook account on one of the teachers and it went on for a couple weeks and no one said anything until finally one student came to me with it, what was going on. A year later someone made a fake Instagram page about the same teacher. This time the page had zero followers. Uh, we had over 30 students go online, comment in support of the teacher and the page was down in less than 45 minutes. Uh, from that initial incident, we found that working directly with students, when bad things happen online, students are more than capable of not only commenting, um, but reporting and taking positive action to keep other people safe online as well. <laughs> My name is Adam Cohen, and I started Smile Cards when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, basically cards that just say, hey, I love your smile. Um, Mostly just a kind message that they passed on at the end. Hashtag I Can Help did everything for me. So when I first created them and I brought them to the first leadership event, I met Kim and I'm like, Kim, look what I have. I want you guys to bring this and do it. She's like, no, I want you to do this. I had my friends and family doing it too, but having someone like Kim or I Can Help and Matt doing it for me and with me was just really great to have them go alongside with me. And then also connecting me with some amazing people like Facebook or Twitter or Whoever else is here at this day today and also I've met throughout the years. Hi, my name is Jennifer McDonald and I work for Twitter. I'm on the public policy team with Twitter. We've partnered with I Can Help um, for the past two years, I believe, and we're excited to continue. I Can Help we originally uh, worked with because they're a local organization and I think that they're doing amazing work on the forefront of digital citizenship, which is very important to us as a company and to get behind the youth movement of bringing these lessons to the people who are digitally native and um, at the front lines of all of these issues that we care deeply about. Hashtag I Can Help will continue their message of deleting negativity on social media and empowering the younger generations to take a stand against cyberbullying. It's not just their mission to delete negativity, it's yours too. Get involved. Will you help? I can help. 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 With great power comes great responsibility, Spider-Man. And using your phone at school can be very irresponsible. In this next PSA, the students at Arden Middle School show us how to use your phones responsibly. Social media is on the rise, but we need to know how to use it responsibly. First of all, use your brain. Before you post, think, and always ask for consent. Your phone can also be a big distraction during class. It could either ring or a notification could sound, so always make sure to silence it or power it off. There is a whole other world on the internet. It's got everything from YouTube videos to endless music and funny memes, but it can also be a dangerous place if you're not careful. That's why Brendan would like to share some of his safety tips for being on the internet and social media. My name is Brendan. I go to Florence Markoffer Elementary School, and my video is named Safety on the Internet and Social Media. My video is about like, steps on how to be safe on the internet and social media. 
and we kind of like act out those steps. I just thought of like what everybody uses every day and I thought how can I make it safer? And so I made steps on how to make it safer. Some skills needed to make a video are steady hands so you don't like shake the camera all the time. Good like shots to make, like tight, wide, and medium. And like good ideas for like making it educational but also entertaining. Hello, my name is Brendan, and these are some steps of how to be safe on the internet and social media. Step one, don't give out personal facts about you or anyone. If you give out your location or phone number or personal information or anyone's, you might put them or yourself in danger or it will hurt the person you gave out their personal facts. David still sleeps with his teddy bear. Step two, don't talk to strangers. If you get a text, message, email, or a call from someone you don't know that's being weird or texted something weird, get a parent, teacher, and a or an adult you trust to block them or remove them so you won't get in contact of that person ever again. Hey, I got a text from someone I don't know. Which Ferrucci, I got a text from someone I don't know. Oh, uh, we should probably block that, here. There, that way they can't mess with you anymore. All right, thank you. Yep. Step three, use parental controls. I suggest you should use Parental controls for your kids. There are apps for parental controls. They block social media and other apps. You can protect your children from the dangers from social media. You should also use a timer for your kids' phones so you can connect with them and have a great time with them without their devices. Oh man, I'm gonna put some controls on David's social media here. Make sure he stays safe. There we go. Hey, my social media got blocked. Huh. Step four, use a strong password and scam protection site or app. You should always use a strong password and never use the same password on different accounts. And I suggest you use a site that tells you what sites can corrupt your computer and which will not. Never give your password to strangers or friends. They can do bad things on your account. Those were my four steps on how to be safe on the internet and social media. Thanks for watching and bye. What would you do without the internet? Could you even survive one day IRL? Well, for our last video today, here's a short film about three teens who get disconnected and must come to grips with reality. Yeah, take that. Die already, I'm about to win. Hey Google, do I look handsome? You're a 10 out of 10. Aw, you're so charming. I'm a natural optimist, I guess. Yeah, go on, die! Take that, I'm about to what? What? What happened? No, 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 what the heck? What? Instagram isn't working. And 
and the internet's dead. Now how am I gonna keep up with my friends and do my streaks? My life is over. <laughs> What do you want? I, well, you know your friends exist in real life. I'm worried about you. You should get up and go see them offline. Fine, I guess I'll try it. <laughs> be hard, but I think it's for the better. It's my fault. It's not you. I need to start making more friends and taking more responsibility for my well-being. I'm sure you understand. Goodbye, Google. And that's all I need to win! All I do is win and win no matter what. Bunny on my side, oh my god. Wow, I feel so in touch with myself. I never realized that my relationship with Google was keeping me from being the real me. I feel great now, and that's what matters. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of SIVA TV. If you'd like to see more student videos or want to find out how you can enter into the SIVAs, check out our website at seccTV.org. I'm Nabayo. And I'm Charlie. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.